Hey guys, uh, the Mad Cap here, uh, back with another video, and this is going to be a pretty interesting topic because this is a surprising turn of events that has come up. So it's been trending uh, across Twitter that uh, the uh, creators of the original uh, animated series for Avatar: The Last Airbender, Michael Dante DiMartino and Brian Konetsko, Konetsko had jumped ship of uh, Netflix's planned adaptation for a live-action series of the show. Um, so I, I just got I got these articles popped up. We're going to look through these one by one just, just for a bit. But it's kind of interesting to see that this had, this had happened because, um, uh, to be quite honest, uh, I wasn't really offered the idea of the last airbender uh a live action show because here's the thing you have this brilliant animated series which is hailed as one of the greatest cartoons animated shows of all time it's definitely stood the test of time from its three-year run that it had with the uh, three seasons and uh it, since then I, I it's hard to even like pinpoint what what was the problem of how they've been handling this franchise because with a popular show like this, this, this could have expanded uh, successfully into other forms of media where you could have like video games. Uh, you do have, you do have some comics. There was a comic lineup by dark horse and there was also the tie in video game that came out for the sixth generation consoles. It wasn't received well. It wasn't like a, it was pretty much just like a standard, like, role-playing uh take on the video game but i mean with uh how technology has jumped since then uh you could actually conceive like a pretty good uh last airbender tie-in video game you know with not just i i wouldn't say you you could introduce like you could reintroduce the, the old characters but you could actually make some stories stories within the mythos within this within this world because this is a this is a pretty expensive world where like uh, besides the main characters, I mean you could tell many stories with other characters across this universe. Uh, but Viacom and Paramount really fucked around with this franchise uh, a couple times. Uh, they essentially just made the worst choices over the years. Like there was the the appalling live action film. And I think hiring, like, M. Night Shyamalan was just, like, the worst fucking choice you could make to helm a property like this. Um, because with that movie, that movie came out. Uh, it was, there was a lot of outrage and vitriol towards that movie for all the right reasons. Uh, the characters were unlike the animated counterparts. Uh, it, it had this very overly pretentious dour serious tone but then you have like this this weird kitty acting in the in the vein of like jake lloyd and mix in with this ya bullshit that kind of hindered uh what could be a like a compelling story that you could uh come up like that could translate well for like a live action movie but then they just they fucked up so early by just skimming through first season's worth of like episodes of characters uh plots important plot points and beats that do like that do occur within that first season uh it condensed it into a 90 minute film uh so yeah that movie was overwhelmingly hated by critics and people and even fans and didn't make its money to warrant like a, a trilogy and um and yeah, you even had the the creators who were uh, who were pretty much just like criticizing these choices that that were made uh, with the live action film, and then um, the the two creators do end up coming back, and then they make like a, a sequel series, The Legend of Korra. Now um, it's worth to note that by the time this show ended with its series finale, uh, the viewership was was pretty high for an animated show, like. Uh, 5.6 million viewers um, that was the, which was the record for that uh, finale of 
the last airbender but then when you had uh cora cora had a strong debut um so we're gonna look at the viewer chart here so cora had a strong debut from its uh first season about five million viewers and then as the seasons went along i mean this is all i have not seen the show so i can't really have an opinion on it but when you do look at the staggering drops in viewership uh it's all due to word of mouth. Uh, this movie, movie, this show was gaining mixed word of mouth. Uh, people weren't liking the show as much, um, and uh, and yeah, over the years, it just dropped from like like five million viewers to just like below like uh, one point five million viewers, which is insane. And it just shows like the reputation of the show as it. As it was being debuted on TV, was not uh, appealing to the fan base as much. So um, there were talks about doing the show in live action again. They wanted to give it like a second try, but only this time instead of just making it into a movie where you condense and remove like a lot of like important story beats, a lot of like events that take place, they wanted to bring it back into the format of the TV show. But it's like, why do we really need a live action TV show when we have the animated show uh, just to watch at any time? I mean, we have three uh, we have three seasons to our access. So, and with Netflix uh, putting the show out for for binge watching, I mean, uh, what what more can you add by just telling the same story? Because essentially, the the issue I have with adapting with um, adapting cartoons or animated properties into live action is because you lose all of that emotion you lose some of that you you do lose the aesthetic that suits better for animation because i recall like i recall b back in the back in the 90s roger ebert uh like praised the beauty and the beast uh animated film and his final words were just you know that the fact that you can accomplish so much with animation that it's it's hard for live action to just kind of replicate it, which is the biggest issue I have with like the Disney remakes, because with the Disney remakes, by taking that into the live action format, you lose so much of the emotion, uh, flair, and any sort of like wow factor that you get away with animation that you just. You just make it come off as static and just kind of like soulless in live action, no matter how big your your budget is. So, anyways, um, this is an article from Variety, and uh, it highlights some comments that um, I believe it was Brian Konitsko speaking out, or yeah, Brian Konitsko speaking out, and also uh, Michael D. Martino made like an open letter uh, to the fans. Like as a like a final address, so here it is. Uh, many of you who have been asking me for updates about the Avatar live action Netflix series, I can finally tell you that I am no longer involved with the project. In June of this year, after two years of development work, Brian Konietzko and I made the difficult decision to leave the pr production. Um. Unfortunately, things did not go as we had hoped, and the issues the issues that uh, we do learn from it is that uh, the conditions with collaborating with Netflix made this intolerable and very difficult for both creators to um, to uh, carry out this project. And uh, I do recall, like a few months ago, I think it was Michael. Michael himself put like a, a pretty much like an address card on his ideas for the live action show, which is that in the live action show, he was going to portray or parallel the Fire Nation uh, to Trump's America, which was a huge red flag because, again, in this whole politically divisive culture we, we live in, it's like these people cannot avoid just pandering or uh, virtue signal political issues in big ips and projects and so that was a that was a huge red red flag for me and i wasn't really at all 
sold with with the live action show with that inception and so you you, you do kind of wonder like because they had left the project uh what is there any like political subterfuge at work with netflix because i know with netflix's content um even though they have a questionable way of like producing their movies and uh even with their shows uh they do kind of like pander with their uh identity politics uh what have you so i i feel like under netflix's involvement it this i think the show could have gone in that direction that would definitely divide a lot of people off and it was going to create more of this divide and put the and pretty much just like put the put the whole franchise into complete degradation over over political stuff so that was also a thing that was brought up by um by brian Kanisko was that you know uh that the environment with netflix how they they were like uh trying to produce this show was pretty sour in in their involvement with this with this project and so um and yeah and because of that we uh this this could like this could lead to a point where this project's gonna fall through and i think i'm okay with that because what already you do have like the whole animated series just for your own pleasure uh just to just to watch and i think that um since it's been announced like there's no way that you could actually like there's no way netflix could actually pick up from this or actually hire somebody with a better understanding with the show because of the climate netflix has created with with how they're approaching their content and i hope i hope to god they don't pick somebody like adam wingard to helm this live action adaptation because after death note that really pissed a lot of death note fans off i mean that will surely lead to another bad bad pro a bad product from a very bad decision to make by hiring adam wingard um but yeah here's another article from vox before i even close off my final thoughts um here's some more comments and this is a this is this is directly from kanitsko uh, they made a very public promise to support our vision. Unfortunately, there was no follow through on that promise. The general handling of the project created what I felt was a negative and unsupported environment. And DiMartino also adds in, I realized I could not control the creative direction of the series, but I could control how I responded. So I chose to leave the project. Now, yeah, this is pretty interesting because who knows who knows what, what happened behind the scenes? Could it be... Um, could it be like the two creators for pulling off political subterfuge with the property, or could it be all Netflix's? Because I have, I have money bet that this is probably Netflix's doing. That really pushed the two. That really pushed the two creators to jump ship and, you know, leave the project. So I think I think from this point on, um, maybe uh, Netflix uh, should should probably just shelve any idea of like adapting the show and i think paramount should uh reconsider uh taking back their uh their property and actually doing something doing something different with it because here's the other thing dave filoni was involved with the show and he directed a couple episodes of the first season and then he went on to create a, the clone war series now that's based off a pretty like that's based off essentially a, a billion dollar IP, fucking Star Wars, but the existence of the Clone Wars really uh, expanded uh, the prequel trilogy. But as like a new, as like its own product where you can actually take, uh, like you can actually take stories from Star Wars and bring it into animation. And because of that, uh, the Clone Wars is. As the show has gone along and now they just wrapped up their final season, um, it remains beloved by Star Wars fans and even casual fans, um, which is a good move on Dave Filoni. And, and I think that's the direction the Avatar Avatar uh, needed years ago was maybe you could probably expand this whole property into into other forms of media that are that could suit best as much as animation. 
Because like I said, you could have made like interesting video games out of this series. You could have uh, expanded more on certain characters um, and more ideas like across the universe and in many places the show took us. So I think uh, I think I'm just gonna wrap it up here, but um, a pretty pretty staggering uh, piece of news, um, and I think uh, I think this is probably gonna hit Netflix pretty pretty badly, considering that recently they put an announcement that they wanted to have an IP that's bigger than Harry Potter, even though they got fucking Stranger Things, even though that show is another story at this stage. Um, so yeah, this might put. Um, this might put Netflix into like a uh, creative limbo, and I think like this project is gonna like probably gonna be shelved and f- fell through. And uh, I think that's I think it's right for the show to fall through because I nobody asked for a live action show. I think we have the animated show all to ourselves to enjoy, and uh, I'm okay with that. Um, but that's. That's all I got to say on this. So uh, thank you for watching and hope you guys uh, definitely uh, follow me on Matt Care Productions. And tell me what you guys think. Is this a good thing that's that's happened or were you excited for a live action take on this and a proper one? Because I, uh, I think with those two guys out, they, they'll probably make another worse decision than hiring M. Night Shyamalan. <laughs>